So much fun. <laughs> Love building cars. Stay in school, kids. Some of the ones in the back, and I'm gonna start warming it up. Channel. We have this amazing 64 Cadillac Coupe de Ville. We're actually putting a Nelson motor in it. We're bringing it to SEMA this year. But before we even think about that, we got to rip the floors out, rip the firewall out, and build an amazing foundation for us to build on top of. It's kind of a mess. It's sitting on a roadster shop chassis now, and the original floor is absolutely haggard. So today, the whole process is we're going to cut the whole thing out, cut the firewall out, and then from there, I'll make a template and start building this thing back up. Come tag along as I destroy my hands in the greater name of this Cadillac for SEMA. Let's get to destroying it. So looking at the floor, originally I was like, wow, there's a lot of levels to this. And it's actually quite simple when I get down to it. I'm actually gonna sever the rest of this floor from the seam. The seam is higher than the actual rails of the frame itself. Roadster shop chassis is absolutely incredible. So I'm just gonna make tabs off it so it can bolt the floor to it. But from what I've seen, I'm gonna cut this, make myself a seam around, keep some of the back of the panel, that's a nice level right there, cut that all out. And then my original floor is gonna come down over this. And I'm gonna stitch it right to this. So the floor is going to be raised, so I'm going to have to make some recess later on for the seats. As for the firewall itself, I'm going to cut the whole thing out, and then from there, I'm just going to make myself a custom tunnel that runs along. So this is going to look really trick when it's done. I showed you guys a lot of the footage of me cutting and grinding, but I kind of wanted to explain what I was doing. This thing had multiple layers to it, and it was stacked. It was almost like 3D, parts coming in and out. So I just started trimming all the fluff out that I couldn't use, and I came all the way up. I followed the inside of this pinch weld. I cut all this off, and then from there, I'm just trimming back anything that's gonna get in my way when I physically make this plate over. So now I'm gonna get the, the height and the pitch and all the stuff set up, and I can start measuring for the firewall, cut that all in one shot on the plasma. So what I'm gonna do here is use my trusty laser, all I want to do is I want to find out where this is at. I already kind of adjusted this, but I need to go down just a little bit. So now that I have this adjusted, I'm going to go ahead and start marking up. But now I know where the engine is going to be in correlation with the firewall. I can start trimming this out. So I'm going to go ahead and measure all this stuff up, the height and the width, cut one big square piece. And I want to figure out what I want for design in there. It's either going to be an oval, but I think I actually have this cool idea of doing like an octagon. That way the tunnel can be octagon. I should come down like a fighter pilot with brakes in it. So I'm going to get on that. I'm going to start measuring this. We'll cut it out. I got some of those measurements that you guys just witnessed. What I'm gonna do is something different. Uh, I'm sure people have done it before. Probably been done a thousand times. But I always like this kind of shape. It's just a bunch of breaks that we could do here in the house. I won't have to, you know, make myself an oval tunnel. So I actually measured the back of this. I just copied this design. It was like nine to eight and eight inches down. So I'm gonna take this design and scale it up a little bit to give me some room. And then from there, I'm gonna imprint it in the back of the actual firewall itself. So it's just gonna follow the same contour. And then when it comes time to me making the tunnel, I'm gonna design a tunnel like this. It's gonna be a broken piece, almost something you see like in a, like a fighter pilot. Well, that's what I would think it would look like. <laughs> All 
All right, so if I measure correctly, which I randomly do, I'm gonna mark this here, mark the other side. This is where the brake mark's gonna be, and this is gonna ride down here for our floor pan to start for the rest of the floor. Give us a good little start. And then I'll trim this up and clean that up when I'm done. But for now, I wanna break this all. Go ahead and measure this. All right, so we got the mock-up firewall in. It's clear code. Uh, we got the bottom brake done. We first time ever using that machine, so she looks pretty good. There's a couple little tweaks I'm gonna have to dolly out, but other than that, we have the the base. So now I'm gonna go put the chassis back under. I'll pack some cars in here tonight and call it a day. All right, now that I have some designs for the floor pan, I'm gonna go ahead and cut those out and we're gonna start laying this thing out. I think my idea with this whole car is I'll lay all the floor out roughly. And then when I start making the seams and start making some of the parts, I'm gonna put it together with some rib nuts. Yeah, then I'll start bead rolling once I get the design in my head, but I kind of wanted to get the whole car laid out. So what I did now is I started designing the pieces for the drive shaft loop. I didn't want to just use one inch tube and bend it. I wanted to create something with good structure to it and I want to make it a little artistic. So I cut it up on the shop saver machine and I used two pieces to make a cool 3D drive shaft loop. This will also look good, but also keep the drive shaft from ripping into the floor. God forbid anything ever happened with that Nelson motor. All right, so we got the forward and aft facing brackets. Then we have the lattice to tie it all in. This will be the width of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and weld her up and we got ourselves a nice piece. I'm getting to a really cool point of the project. So you guys saw that we trimmed a lot of the floor out and we lost the mounting points to go to our, our chassis, our roadster shop chassis. So I started designing some brackets. Now I have to figure out where to set them. So this rocker has to get tied to these mounting points. I'm gonna do myself what I call like a backwards jig. I'm gonna lay some tube in the bottom of the frame. I know that I wanna get the rockers parallel to the bottom of this. That's kind of where our ride height was and what we liked. From there, I can physically get my brackets I designed, know where to place them, center this all and lay the brackets down. So what I'm gonna do now is get the tubes in here, get the rocker set in, get the boys to help me align the whole project. And then from there, I can put my mounts down. Now that I have the depth of my bracket here, I need to build some sort of a gusset that rides this rocker. This rocker is very thin and I wanna put as much load across most of it as I can. So I'm gonna design a flat plate. The top bracket will then slide in and then I'll have some triangles that come down that gusset up and down. And then from there, I'll tie this to the other bracket over here at some point but I wanna finish these as an assembly. So I'm gonna go ahead and design this flat plate, the triangle, get all tied together. Then we can start welding this bracket together. It's pretty uh, pretty complex once it's welded together. It'd be a nice solid little unit that ties the whole car together. Got my base plate, which you'll see is pretty cool when it comes out. This actually tops uh, bracket slides into it. It's like a tab and slot system. And I have my triangles that gusset it. So we're gonna go ahead and cut this out as an assembly. And I'll show you guys how it works. So this is the frame bracket. This one that goes with the rocker. I wanted to beef up the rocker because it's so thin. So this gives me more space to, for a load on the rocker itself. And then I made this indexing note right here. So if you can see, this gets welded onto the rocker. And there's my indexing note for the depth and the height of where this has to be to make the frame where I want it. And from there, I just did some gussets. This is gussets up and down. And then from there, we have ourselves a nice sturdy frame bracket and it looks pretty slick. So now the hard part is I gotta go prep all these up. rockers and we're gonna get these welded in. Go ahead, we're gonna 
gonna go ahead and bolt these into the frame. And then from there, I can actually start adjusting these and welding them in. So much fun. I love building cars. Stay in school, kids. Now that we got them all dialed in, I get to adjust some of the ones in the back and I'm gonna start welding it up. Whoa, zippity zappity! Stop! Ah, stop! Did you get it? Yeah, I got Why it. Why did we get so bad? Ah, ah, yeah. That doesn't feel good, guys. <laughs> Make sure you're always wearing protective eyewear, protective face gear, and gloves. we get to work on something that I love the most and that is trying to make some artwork. I got these uh, braces that you guys saw me fab up. We got them all welded in. Now I'm gonna go ahead and tie them all together. I wanna make this thing as rigid as possible. All this weight was on the rocker and I just don't feel safe with this weight just being on these little plates that I made. Even though it's a little overkill, I still wanna tie these together and then also still weld it to the rocker so this thing has a hard time ripping out if we ever did some stunts. As I say stunts, I mean racing. So what I'm gonna do is tie these two together make myself almost like a reverse handlebar that comes down and then I'm gonna do like some sort of a bracket that ties those two together. And then from there I'll be able to weld it right in the seam. 